I don't want to do this. <sighs> Good morning, YouTube. I hope that you're well. I'm singing like this because Mel is mean to me. And I went over in my last video by 20 seconds. And I don't have any makeup, so this cloak will have to do. But I have found a loophole. Because Melody told me that I didn't have to sing when I was reading. So this is my story that I'm writing for Nano. No Way Out is the name of my story. The stars shone bright on endless rolling acres of the Australian outback. The landscape was dotted with red termite mounds, sparse shrubbery and the occasional eucalypt tree. Here and there were the curled up shapes of sleeping cows, and on the narrow dirt road that wound its way through the paddocks was a car. It was small and rusty with crooked mirrors and a cracked windshield. The headlights were bright, and as the car slowed in its windy passage, just a few of the cows looked up to see what all the fuss was about. The car stopped and, after a moment, a scruffy looking man got out. He staggered towards the fence that separated the paddock from the road and pushed his way under it. His progress was hindered by a bundle of cloth held loosely in his arms. He walked a few steps, then stopped and dropped the bundle, which hit the ground with a soft thump. The man laughed raucously and then turned and threw up in a shrub. Having wiped his mouth, he staggered back to the rusty little car and drove off into the night. For a while, all was silent in the paddock. The cows looked at the bundle the man had left, but none made a move to approach it. The night was cold, and frost would be forming if the air were not so dry. Overhead, the stars twinkled and continued their silent vigil over the outback. When at last the bundle was investigated, it was by a young calf barely old enough to walk. She approached the bundle and gave it a sniff. Mother, it's one of theirs, a human calf. One of the older cows raised her head and looked at the bold young one. Stay away from it, Nina. But mother, without fur it'll freeze. When her mother spoke again, there was a bitter edge to her voice. Let it freeze. One less human in the world will do us good. Nina looked into her mother's eyes, and perhaps some of the age beyond her years showed in that gaze, because the older cow flinched and looked away. You know that isn't true. This is just a calf. It doesn't yet know the horrible things the rest of its species does. Just when it looked like Nina had won the argument, they were interrupted by another voice. Kara, what's all this? Some of us are trying to sleep. Kara looked around at a dark brown cow with longer than average horns. Nina found a human calf. She wants to protect it. Although she tried, Kara couldn't help stop the slightly mocking edge that crept into her voice on the last five words. The other cow stiffened. And you haven't killed it yet. Why? Kara forced herself to display a calm she did not feel. It's just a calf, so Saro. Just a calf. It can't help what wretched species it was born as. Saro looked enraged. You intend to let it live? Kara seemed to get, be getting vexed because her next words came out short and icy. I intend to do nothing. It won't survive by itself, and I have no intention of aiding it. If you won't kill it, then I will. Kara was up in a flash, practically locking horns with Saro. You are many great things, Saro, but would you really kill a calf? I can't believe you would do that, no matter whose. Saro glared back defiantly. You are weak, Kara. It is cows like you that are the reason we are still oppressed. That was the last straw. Kara raised a ho cloven hoof and struck Saro in the chest. She stumbled back, and her glare intensified, but there was also fear in her eyes. Fine. Defend your calf. It will die anyway. With that, she turned and strode away. When Sarah had left, Nina timidly approached her mother. Mummy, you're not really going to let it die, are you? Kara sighed. She could feel a tipping point, the two possible futures hanging off each of her answers. At last she spoke. It would seem not.